So in this video, we're going to have fun with a little bit of bookbinding, a little cover. So I've got little notebooks. Like the sequins cost more in shipping than itself. And because of that, well, I have this thing with paper goods, anything that you can consider ephemera. I just can't bear to use it because of the fear of not having it. I mean, a lot of people do that. I started with stickers when I was little, probably still have those stickers now, though I have a very small ephemera collection um, after that move a few years ago. Let's see, I think I wrote it in here. Yeah, it was $14, $25 in shipping. <laughs> I was like, I wanted it so bad. Uh, it, it was lucky it showed up. The box was just destroyed. Hey, where's my bookmark? It came with a little tiny black bookmark, so I'm going to have to go look for that. Um, before I could get that, I got a Pentalic book off of eBay. I don't know if I wrote it. It was pretty cheap. Um, but, again, tiny, useful, can't bear to use it. So I made a little book out of my favorite paper because I noticed I've been drawing lately on slightly cheaper paper, but I won't say, I mean, Canson makes, I think, my favorite paper in notebook form. And I've been doing little sketches of myself because I kind of want to animate myself. I mean, let me see. I mean, honestly, I'm most proud of that picture. Look at me. Oh, so cute. Um, but I still haven't quite found the picture I like. So I'm still continuing with this draw little tiny portraits of myself. But I'm thinking I find it distracting to have the other drawings on the same page. So I'm, I was hoping I could just do a tiny portrait and then flip a page, tiny portrait. Sadly enough, I'm going to make another one because this one is so cute. I have now made it too precious in my head. Because <laughs> I even use ephemera stickers. I have, well, these aren't stickers. These are real stamps that I color copied at least 15 years ago. <laughs> and I still have the original stamps. But uh, I can't bear to use this one. So I'm hoping the one I use today, I'll be able to use. I might make a whole bunch of them and maybe do a giveaway. Don't know. Um, don't even know if people any might want a free one. Who knows? So my tools today. I know this is a cutting mat, but it's my surface. So eventually I'll have another color. I don't know. But, you know, you can never have too many cutting mats, right? I've had this one forever. It's going to be the right size. I always have a bunch of rulers. I'm using a blade. This is too dull to use on fabric, but fine on paper. As long as you don't bear down too hard, because if you bear down too hard, you get yourself. You don't want to do that. So this book is in signatures. It has a glue binding. And then the plastic cover is sewn with what they call invisible thread, but it's really just tiny monofilament. And it's not this kind of monofilament, it's this kind of monofilament. I've got to, I've had this for a while, but I finally got to use it in my sewing machine. And my sewing machine is quite old. I mean, you can't even see it. You can see maybe where it, there we go. I mean, this is jewelry making stuff. And if you had to sort of hand sew it, because I tried gluing the plastic and that didn't work. And I've got a lot of different kinds of glue. But, uh, this is not what you want in your sewing machine. So I think your sewing machine may throw a fit. But my sewing machine didn't even notice. Didn't even notice this stuff. And I bought it not knowing what I was going to do with it. 
But I mean, Gooderman is always insanely good. So for the signatures though, and you could possibly use the plastic thread for the signatures. I wouldn't, I like either polyester or cotton. I think this is cotton and I only got this for crocheting. And I did crochet something, but then, you know, you have this languishing and I like how it's variegated. So you need thread, needle, glue to do your signatures, at least one or two. And these are dusty, but, but great big binder clips. It's a good idea. You can use other things too. Like I have this schmancy oldie one, though it's not super old. Probably paid too much for it, but I like the look. And then for my paper, so I have this one. So I've proven I like this paper. And I happen to have its bigger brother. And, and the size of this dictates the size of this because I didn't want to waste any. And it's pretty much one, two, three. And then these go across and it's essentially one signature uh, leaf and then two. And you're gonna need three pieces of this. So my math is off, it's actually I four. Trim them off. I mean, you can still see a few of the prefer perforated pages. When I had it all glued, to, and there's a perforated page. I didn't even clean up the edges because that wasn't the goal for this book. And I don't think it should be a goal because in the olden days, they didn't even cut them up. They didn't bind them. Like if you, you'll find an old book once in a while where they're together. So you would have to sort of put that inside and then go and then open up your page. <clears throat> but that won't be necessary for this little guy. And then I was like, what can I use for cover? And I realized, why not Bristol board? Who doesn't have Bristol board at home? But I just happen to, because I like Bristol for certain paper crafts. Like I did a whole bunch of paper cutting. Um, what is it called? Pop-ups. I have a whole thing. I had a whole thing about paper pop-ups and Bristol is awesome for paper pop-ups. It's also nice to draw on because there's no tooth, but it's super heavyweight, so you can ink on it. In pencil, I would never recommend watercoloring on it. But it's also a really good cover. I mean, this is a really firm cover, but I also felt like putting the plastic cover because, let's see, I am obsessed with my Midori. <laughs> Will I use it? I hope. I hope I do. But the aesthetic of this is just gorgeous. I mean, look at the green dots and then the green ribbon, the plastic cover. I was looking at their, I think they only come, I mean, this is what, an A5? Can't remember might come in a B6, B5, not sure. But their smallest ones, which would be a B6 or an A6 or A7. I don't think it exists in an A7, which is essentially this, this, and maybe this. I, I want small, something in my pocket. Anything bigger than this is just gonna get destroyed in my pocket, but anything smaller is too, but that's the thinking. And I, <laughs> that's why I tried the gluing, because I didn't want to melt it. I am, again, I am obsessed with this. But my little squirrel brain, or others say goblin, my goblin brain can't bear to use it just yet, but I'm determined. So we'll put our stuff aside and get to cutting. So I got my sheets and let's get to cutting. So it's pretty simple. 
the whole page is essentially nine by 12, nice and easy. So that determines our height. So you just do four inch pieces. Let's pick the easy side. Okay, one, two, three, four. That's that whole line there. Let's just flip this just a tiny bit. Nice and easy. One, two, three, four. I like to have them in the middle. Like you can almost see it's in the middle there. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You just have to be careful with this. And you could also line up against the tick marks. So if you feel weird about that, just line them up against the tick marks. Because there's people... I love these quilting rulers. I use them for everything. And if you don't have, if you have a dull one, it's great to just put it right into the paper making. Now, one might be slightly shorter than the others. Just by know, microns. But uh, don't let that deter you. It's not supposed to be perfect. Because if you want it perfect, you could just clean up the binding after you've done everything. Well, the text block is... No, text block is text block. I can't remember the words. So even if it's a hair bigger, it's okay. You want some variation. You want some character. And then these get cut in half. So, okay, so these get cut in half. And you can be careful with it, but I'm okay with that. So it's nine across, so you just need four and a half. Is it going to be perfect? No, but again, our goal isn't perfection. Our goal is to have a little notebook to have fun with. If we make it so it's not cherishable, maybe we'll actually use it. That was my goal. And let's see, how big are my signatures? Let's see. Let's find a center. There we go, so one, let's find the other side, I think that's our other side, and then the center, so let's see, so it's one, two, three, four, see, so there are four sheets each. And I think this one has one, two, three, four, six signatures in it. So just think. It's good to have a bone folder for this, but I I don't have one. But you can always use <laughs> why don't you put the protector on. And when you have enough of these, you just make sure to add one extra to each pile. I'm going to go and cut everybody else and fold everybody else. That could be a signature. Or it could be not. You, know, you can mess around with it. So I'll be back once I have uh, everything cut and folded and put into essentially four sheet signatures. So you end up with eight pages per signature. So here's a side note. Now that I'm actually paying attention, I notice it's a little hair bigger than nine inches. Why would they do that to us? I don't know. So when you cut them in half, just be aware of that. Just try to find your center for the nine. So I found the easiest way to find center, fold the biggest one in half, make little tick marks and use that as your guide. So to do the math, essentially you're gonna have 24 sheets of paper. And I'm just sort of, 
since I am aware that there's going to be some that are a little shorter, some that are a little, I mean, wider, some. Just shuffle them like cards. And then, yeah, one. And then just keep shuffling. But you know that you're going to have. Because you're also going to have that little perforated edge. And it's also good to sort of shuffle them just so that you can have that perforated edge here and there and on different sides. Not always on the second side of your signature or first side of your signature or whatever. But I'll be back. So I shuffled them, realized it's six signatures of four sheets, 24. And what you can do is Again, you can use whatever you have to behave like a bone folder. And do this for all of them. What I like to do is, once you do that, what's Put them in your clip. Let them chill out because we're not going to use a book press. We're not going to use. We're using what we got. Because let's just say, did I have a book press way back in the day? No, but I did have. But I did have two pieces of a large pieces of wood to put my signatures in as well as some giant C clamps. Essentially a book vise, but since this guy is so little, and just let it chill for at least a day or even overnight. It'll help you with the next part of sewing them. Okay, now we're going to mark our signatures with a pencil. So you'll need a ruler, pencil, eraser, um, and patience. So my personal That's rule of orange. thumb is half an inch on each side. Those are your uh, starter holes. And then center, and for this book, I'm only going to do uh, three punctures. But in the last one, I did five because it's just my natural are always odd um, setting. But I want to make this a little simpler uh, tutorial. And I think it's also good always have an odd number of holes because then you're going to pop out where you need to pop out. But that'll make sense later on. Inch there, and one in the middle. That's about the two inch mark. <clears throat> You could mark the top and the bottom and then connect the dots, but... As you can tell, that one's not very straight, but that's okay. So you can always delete, you can always erase. Because this is a piece of the paper you're never going to draw on. What's this book doing? Hmm. 
Okay. Now we're gonna poke our holes. You can use a needle, just make it a heavy duty needle. So uh, a work, something to protect your work surface. I have a lot of cutting mats and then and all. I happen to have an awl. So that's what I'm going to be using. And you're gonna poke holes. And I like to reinforce from the inside. With your a real go getter, you can mark them on the inside and poke them from the inside. So I'll be back once they're all poked. That might be good. This is an embroidery, big eye. We'll see how it holds up. Variegated thread. I realize I don't use too much of this. I don't remember if I use. Let me see. Let's see. Yeah, it's just a double strand. Probably have too much. And you can always tie more onto the end of it. I could have used a normal needle if I wanted to. Or a long needle or whatever. Okay, so before I tie it, it's good to wax it. And I always keep a tea light nearby. What am I doing? Oh. So on your first one, you're essentially creating the, uh, well, we'll call this the first one. And it's really gonna grow this way. Matter. I'm gonna make sure our knot is just big enough so it doesn't go through the hole. Give it an extra just in case. But you do want a little bit of a tail.
Um, I think I'm just gonna go this way. I'm trying to make another knot. Worst comes to worst, you can just drag it through. If you give yourself a long enough tail, you just tie it in there. Doesn't have to be pretty, doesn't have to be too tight either. Because eventually you're gonna glue them up at the end. Hmm. Not the prettiest, but it'll work. what changes. You go under, try to go. You don't have to go through two strands, but you can if you need to. But you're not gonna lock them. I will. Because then I go into the next one from the other direction. <coughs> there are different techniques. There are more decorative ones, but pretty much. More decorative threads. Don't have to be super tight. And then just keep going. Just reached the end of my last signature, so we're gonna bind off on this last stitch. Again, it's not pretty, but it's effective enough. I mean, the goal is to hold them together so the glue can set. Uh, again, I kind of whispered in the last bit that, you know, you can, tons of different ways to bind more secure so that you can see your pretty stitches and such, but my goal was to protect them in the end. And here we are, it's a little loose. You can use this. going to do, I'm going to 
did not attach this cover. So, so oh, I did. Now we glue this on. So our goal here is to cut a strip that's four inches wide and then we're just going to eyeball what we're going to use to bind this. The five and an eighth inches is what I've measured for the front, the back, and the spine. The first try, I did not score the binding. This time I'm going to try. It's a little imprecise, but I actually like the effect of that first score for the front because it makes ease of opening when you have two little scores next to each other. Kind of like perfect binding works that way. Here's where I realized I scored a little short. So, you know, you always have to compare what you've got and make adjustments.
Now, if you're familiar with Perfect Binding, they usually have that little score on the front and the back. Makes it so you don't necessarily crack your spine at first, but they don't really glue everything together. It's just like a little bit of um, adhesive on the front cover and on the back cover to stick the book into it. And then the spine is essentially free to move as it will. But I still like the score. So I'm still using what I've got. For glue, I'm using just old fashioned Elmer's. If little kids can eat it, it's safe for your book. But others have said that there's probably silicone in it, so they wanna use book binder glue. Um, honestly, again, if it's safe for kids to eat, I don't mind. I like to go heavy with my glue. Um, I like the effect of when the Bristol board gets kind of soaked with it and kind of wrinkly and you can see those little lines on the spine, but you don't have to. Just enough to get slightly in between the signatures, sort of secure everybody. traditionalists have a dedicated brush for glue. Me, I don't want to sacrifice any brushes for the glue and I don't know how often I'm going to be doing this. So uh, if you don't mind glue on your hands, you're fine. I'm just gonna clip and leave it overnight. Time to figure out the cover. I use sheet protectors, preferably heavy weight. Um, before I used a um, vinyl that I think was a remnant. Not sure what weight it was, but I wanted to try something a little thinner. So I'm adding an eighth to my measurement, so it's like four to an eighth. And my goal first off is to make essentially a wraparound cover, kind of like thinking a simple plastic cover that goes around textbooks, and then you're gonna sew it later.
then you can eyeball what's too much and just trim that off. So now the plan is to sew the top and the bottom back in the front. Now we're going to sew and the first part is footage from the first book I made and then it finishes off with footage from the okay, second Okay, first book. step, we're gonna see if I can get the monofilament and I've already lost my bobbin. Oh, there it is. <sighs> bobbin, I'm set up with a size. Ugh. 16 needle Teflon well Teflon foot because essentially it's clear we'll see if I can thread this silly thing ah uh, yes <clears throat> my town is a very quiet town but every once in a while you do get some action boy and this stuff is way thinner than any jewelry monofilament I've used so I do have some high hopes, but I'm not sure how I'm going to get it to stick to this bobbin. Whoa. I know, come on, you can do it. Usually I hold, oh, I had it through there, but that was a fail. Usually I hold my thread when I'm doing this anyway, so maybe I should do that. Oh. Oh, this is not good. Okay, that worked. I'm not putting it too much on here because who knows when it's going to spontaneously fail. Come on. Don't worry, I'm going to be trimming that thread. Boy, I can't even see it. All right, we're gonna whip out the glasses. Of course, I put the bobbin down and it pretty much unspooled itself, so I'm gonna have to do some care for that. But with the glasses on, well, it's thinner than any thread I got, that's for sure, because that was super easy. Oh, and I can already see a knot. It's already knotted itself. I don't know. We'll see. So definitely, if you're using this stuff. I've seen these little clips that clip on the bobbin. I don't really like buying into silly tricks, but it might be necessary for this guy. Hopefully that'll hold it in place. Ooh. Oh, look at that. Success. So I've already pre-measured it. It's pretty much where the folds are. It's already dirty, but what can we do? Hopefully this works. Take off the glasses. You know, <clears throat> I'm going to start from the inside out. I'm going to give myself very little margin. Okay. I drop the needle almost to, oh yeah, size 16, almost to the bottom. So my, machi my machine is old enough where I have to Hold the thread and I sew. Oh, I'm start this end. I'm gonna try to do a locking stitch. Make 
sure that's lined up. Because it wants to stick to itself. Because this vinyl, I don't know, it's middle of the road. Ooh, my stitch is too short. Since mine goes from like zero to four, it's a three. stitch I probably just burn it. Ooh. Uh, it, it kind of worked. Um, yeah we'll see. I'm gonna keep going for every of the I'm gonna keep going for all the sides and I'll be back. So this is the second version of it. I should have used a size 14 needle for this one. Uh, the needle was too intense. The 16 was too intense for it. Um, I'm also, well, the thicker vinyl was a little more, I don't know what I even call it, but it was a little squishier. So I just had to trim the ends and then just sort of um, melt them. Where this one, the thinner stuff is a bit, I think the best word I can use is crisp. Um, so I felt I needed to tie them off and it's very sensitive to heat. So just be very careful if you do this. Cause I think if you just tie them off, it'll be fine. Here they are. I do like that seam there. Next time I might do it for the other side too, because it just makes ease of like, see for that, ooh, opening. This one might bite you a little, see? How this one kind of bites a little, but then like, I over glued it anyways, but. Ah, uh, they're just so cute. I'll have to say that the softer vinyl, and I want to say it could be a gauge. I know 20 is the heaviest, and at least for vinyl, it's like the reverse of metal. Um, could, again, middle of the road. So I know the lightest is like an 8, so maybe this is a 14. It's squishier, takes the needle a bit better. The feed dogs actually chewed a little into this one, and you can just hear how crispy that is compared to, well, this one has a lower octave, but both of them. Incredibly cute. I'm really proud of it. Good endorphin rush when you look at them, just because, you know, you make anything, it'll, indeed, re it'll release some endorphins in your head, so thank you for watching this, and if anyone's interested, I'll probably give one of these away, because I think I've made them both too precious to use. <laughs> Uh, always, always. Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sticking with me this far. Have a good day till next time.